This is Mission Control Houston. Welcome to ISS Update. It is uh, Wednesday, March 6, 2013. You're looking at a live view inside the International Space Station Flight Control Room here at the Johnson Space Center. This team today is being led by Flight Director Michael Lammers. He is sitting there at the center console there on the right. Astronaut Doug Wheelock there on the left in the white shirt. He is today's Capcom, the voice up to uh, the crew. It's uh, going to be a busy day on board the International Space Station. Lots of activity taking place inside as the crew works on various uh, science and uh, maintenance tasks. And then outside the space station, quite uh, an unusual activity going on today as uh, this will be the first time that uh, an unpressurized cargo piece is going to be removed from the SpaceX Dragon spacecraft, which you see they're docked with the International Space Station. It is uh, currently plugged into the Harmony node. This is a view from the bottom side of Dragon. You're looking up inside the trunk there. You can sort of make out uh, two what looks like a Y-shaped uh, devices there. Those are grapple bars. Those were flown up in this unpressurized section of Dragon up to the International Space Station. Together they weigh about 602 pounds. Those are going to be removed later on today beginning at about 1 p.m. Central Time. This will be a completely ground commanded maneuver with the teams here in Houston uh, commanding the station's giant 58 foot long robotic arm to reach in there and to pull these grapple bars out. Now what these grapple bars are are pieces of equipment that will be used to remove a failed radiator on the S-1 and P-1 truss of the International Space Station should that ever be deemed necessary. Uh, these grapple bars are stored inside Dragon. They're sort of uh, canted or tilted over uh, diagonally a little bit just to uh, make them a little bit smaller, uh, make it a bit easier to back them out of the Dragon spacecraft coming up later on today. Uh, but those are going to be stored temporarily out on a payload attachment point on the outside of the station and then later on this summer they will be uh, moved over to the S1 and P1 truss on the left and right hand side uh, of the station. In addition to that, Kevin Ford, the commander of Expedition 34, has been working on uh, the majority of his morning uh, taking down the Marangoni experiment, which is inside the International Space Station. This uh, is a Japanese experiment that takes a look at fluid tension and how that works in zero gravity. You see fluid tension here on Earth all the time. If you ever washed your car, uh, you see how those water droplets sort of uh, form into little balls. That is surface tension. So this Marangoni experiment, or the Marangoni effect, takes a look at that and also takes a look at how heat uh, is transferred through those fluids and how that is different up in gravity versus uh, here on Earth. Kevin Ford also working uh, to review some procedures today on the carbon dioxide removal assembly. Uh, this is part of the device on board the space station that removes carbon dioxide, does exactly what it sounds like. Uh, it keeps the air acceptable and keeps it uh, clean for the crew members to uh, breathe. There were some spare parts flown up on the SpaceX flight, some new uh, beds that help scrub the air itself. Uh, but there's going to be some ongoing maintenance taking place later on this week, and he's taking a look at the procedures for that uh, today. Ford, Oleg Nowitzki, and Evgeny Tarelkin also in their final uh, week almost aboard the International Space Station. They are due to come home on March 14th. They're going to be landing just to the north of the town of Arkalik in Kazakhstan, uh, but they're getting everything gathered, packing items up. Uh, there are some very specific instructions that were sent up to the crew in terms of what they need to keep, what they need to bring home, and what they need to throw away. So it's almost like uh, packing whenever you're coming home from a vacation. They're going to be gathering all that item up, all those items up, and uh, getting ready for the return to Earth. In terms of the timeline on March 14th, their Soyuz, which is the Soyuz TMA-06M, uh, will be undocking uh, the evening of March 14th. We're going to have coverage of the farewell and hatch closure uh, beginning at about 3.45 p.m. that afternoon, the central time here on NASA television. The actual farewells and hatch closure will take place at 4.15 p.m., and then undocking coverage begins at 7.15 with undocking at 7.30 p.m. Central Time as Soyuz backs away from the International Space Station and then will return at 9.45 p.m. Central Time for landing coverage. The deorbit burn uh, will take place at 10.04 p.m. Central Time with landing uh, there on the ground in Kazakhstan uh, less than an hour later at 10.57 p.m. Central Time. Even though it is March in Kazakhstan, uh, the weather is still extremely cold. It's uh, in the single digits uh, during the day, uh, falling into negative single digits, so quite a frosty uh, greeting for this crew as they return home after uh, five months in space. While they are doing that, Chris Cassidy, 
uh, Pavel Vinogradov and Alexander Mazurkin, which will be the next crew to fly up to the station, uh, have been undergoing final preparations at the Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center. They've been going through some final qualification simulations and tests uh, and being officially certified to fly. Uh, they will wrap up some simulation runs today. And then tomorrow they're going to hold the traditional news conference at uh, GCTC. Uh, they'll take a ceremonial tour of Red Square there in Moscow and will lay flowers at the Kremlin Wall where uh, several space icons are interred, including uh, Yuri Gagarin. So uh, quite a bit of tradition and activity taking place as this crew gets ready to fly up to the station on March 28th. They will be the first crew to perform a single-day launch to docking uh, flight as they head to the space station, so they will dock about six hours uh, after they lift off from the Baikonur Cosmodrome. Of course, we'll have live coverage here on NASA television of those activities.